What's up guys, it's Lou from Unbox Therapy and this is my iOS 5 review. The first thing I want to talk about is notifications which are much improved. Instead of interrupting what you're doing, you see how they just show up along top here. Um, whether you're in a web browser, whatever it is that you're doing. Now this is Apple's new messaging system. The notifications can be accessed at any time, much like the Android system for notifications. And Apple's new messaging system is real nice, real quick actually. It's been called the BBM killer. and what it, what it does is it's basically instant messaging for any of your Apple devices. Right now I'm communicating between my iPod Touch with iOS 5 and this iPad 2. You can send images, multimedia, so on and so forth. Everything happens really quickly and smoothly. And with that new notification system, it makes it even more usable, more friendly to use. There you go. You can see instantaneously that image has been transferred over to the iPod Touch. Real cool for households that have multiple iOS devices. The next thing that I want to talk about is Twitter. Now, you may think, hey, that just looks like the regular Twitter app, and it does, but what's changed is the integration in other places within the operating system. When you click on settings, you'll notice that there's actually a Twitter icon right within the preferences panes, the settings pane on the left-hand side, and um, basically what you end up with is a one-time login so that whatever it is that you're doing, you've got Twitter options. So, for example, in the web browser, you can tweet web pages directly from there without having to go to you know, twitter.com or into the Twitter app. Same as within YouTube. Again, you can tweet a video um, via the share menu. So really cool stuff, um, a big improvement. Now on the iPad version of iOS 5, you've also got tabbed browsing finally. And uh, obviously that's self-explanatory. It's going to allow you to set up a number of different tabs, just like in Firefox or Chrome for that matter. And, uh, you know, a real, a real useful addition as far as I'm concerned within the web browser. You may notice as well, everything is really quick. Loading up unboxtherapy.com there. Um, it's got a couple of ads, big thumbnails, so on and so forth. The next thing is this reading list, which I really like. It's kind of like Instapaper, which was an app before that. You can add pages to your reading list instead of, say, bookmarks. You may not want to keep them there forever. It's like a temporary reading list. And then from there, you can sort of jump back to them and uh, check them out when you have more time to read. So you can have all of them show up or you can toggle the unread items so that you can get up to date. A very cool addition. That might be my favorite besides notifications. The next thing is newsstand. And uh, this is kind of like uh, the book application except for magazines. Um, there's a number of them available. One thing I noticed, though, is I couldn't seem to find the New York Times for the iPad, even though I could get it on the iPod Touch. Um, I saw it show up there for a quick second, but I couldn't find it actually with, uh, within the selectable options here. So um, let me know if you guys have installed that on your on your iPad, um, or maybe it's just because I'm in Canada. I'm not really sure. Now, most of the uh, books available, or so I should say magazines available, um, the app is free, but then you've got to go ahead and buy the individual issues of the magazine. Um, for example, Auto Week, they're 99 cents an issue, and then you got to click buy now, and then I guess it'll be within there for forever from that point forward. So the notifications are a little bit more advanced. You can actually go into the notifications preferences within settings, and you can select the, the way you want them to look, as well as how often you want to be notified, and uh, whether or not they show up in your lock screen, whether or not they have an audible sound. Um, this is really nice. I like the ability to customize notifications depending on the application. The next thing is reminders, and this to me is not really <laughs> that big of a deal. It's it's a way of setting up little reminders, little notes, and um, you can check them off as you've done them. Or something that's interesting is with Siri on the uh, 4S, you can actually make them uh, you know verbally, and they can also be location-based, so you can tie different tasks into specific locations, set up different lists, so on and so forth for the organized bunch that you are. <laughs> Uh, next is the photo application, which has added a couple of features. Uh, when you select the edit icon here, um, some of them are, are what was there before, but others are new, like red eye reduction. And um, otherwise, you know, you can also enhance the image, um, get some better color in there, or at least the appearance of <laughs> more color. And of course, the crop feature is there, which I guess is pretty self-explanatory as well. You can crop. There you go. Beautiful. 
So moving on, I want to show you the difference in the notification bar on the iPod Touch. This is what it's going to look like on the 4S once I pick it up tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> and uh, when you click on something from within the notification bar, it brings you straight there. So weather being a good example, but also mail. If you have a, ma um, a message or an email, it'll bring you right into that application from the notification bar. Real quick, real smooth. And um, the other thing is lock screen notification. So now you don't actually have to go in to see what it is. And when you unlock with a notification, it'll bring you straight there. So you go right into it instead of having to unlock, click on the uh, app and so on and so forth. Take too many steps. Brutal stuff that it used to be. So anyways, these are all welcome improvements. No major kind of overhaul. I suppose Siri is what people are most excited about. And that's not really available on these other devices yet. It, it looks like it's going to be exclusive to the 4S. So for all of you other people with devices all the way back to the 3GS that are upgrading to iOS 5, these are things that you can start to use immediately. Improvements that you're going to see immediately. So anyway, guys, if you like this content, if you found this helpful, hopefully you can like and favorite this video as it does help me out a bunch. And definitely stay tuned to the channel for the uh, iPhone 4S unboxing and review, which is going to be coming up tomorrow as soon as I get my hands on it. If you haven't subscribed yet, you're going to want to do that. Uh, anyway, guys, until next time, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you around.